So hello and welcome. Um, today I'm going to show you how to make a wet mount and first let's have a look at the different parts and the materials that you need. Over here I've got uh, suspended in some water. I've got my sample material to look at. In this case it's a water sample from a pond um, and it contains uh, some algae suspended in the water. You need uh, glass slides regular microscopy, uh, microscopic glass slides, of course, cover glasses over here, then a dropper pipette, tweezers, and over here I've got some filter paper. You can also use tissue paper, of course, uh, but uh, filter paper I think works better because it ha it's got a, um, a sharp corner and this way it's easier for me to take, it's easier to take up the water um, from, from the slide. I've got a little more control, so filter paper is better. Okay, so let's uh, start to make um, our first wet mount. First and foremost, uh, it's kind of important that you mix the sample a little bit, so that to make sure that all the algae um, are properly suspended in the water. And then of course you can take the dropper to pick up some of the sample material you, you apply a small amount of sample on the glass slide. Then you take a cover glass and here you have to really make sure that you only take one of them. They're pretty thin, around 0 0.1 millimeter thick depending on the, on the type that you get, 0 0.1 or 0 0.15 actually is, is a quite a common standard. You always handle the um, cover slips here on the side to prevent fingerprints. And now basically the thing that you should not do is you should not go like this and drop it on the slide. Why not? Um, because this way you uh, catch air bubbles beneath the cover glass and this way you um, essentially, these uh, air bubbles are somewhat disturbing. Um, they're not a big problem, but if there are too many of them, then they actually hinder the movement of the organisms. And um, yeah, they're kind of, uh, do not make a very nice, uh, they do not make a very nice picture. So um, that's not the way to do it. So what's the way to do it? Of course, you apply again the, the sample material, you properly suspend the algae, you apply a small amount of sample material here, and then instead of just simply dropping it on the glass slide, you do the following. You can use tweezers again or you can do it with your fingers. You go at an angle over here and then you carefully lower it like this. And this way the water flows over here and pushes out all the air. Now it can be that essentially you've got a little bit too much water. And let's try this. Okay, let's see what to do in, if you have too much water. Okay. So here we're overdoing it a little bit. You see the, there are some air bubbles here as well. Okay, and in this case, um, we've, you've got the problem that the cover glass floats on the water, like this. Okay, and this is not a good uh, this is not a good uh, thing because um, every bump on the table will actually cause a lot of vibration, and then it, it's not so. Um, it's not so stable. So that's why basically you have the filter paper over here and what you do now is the following, you remove some of this water and now basically now you know why I talked about this this uh, sharp edge at the beginning of the video. Okay, you can actually take up some of this water over here and this way the cover glass does not float anymore and it's more stable. Okay, now of course you can also do uh, the opposite, you can add some water and generally it's like this that if you um, use the microscope uh, for let's say 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes uh, then the heat of the microscope light will evaporate some of the water and uh, that can be a problem and it's uh, and you need to replace uh, the water. So let's uh, try to simulate this a little bit here. We've got too little water. Okay, we've got too little water. And now I'm going to drop it on here with my fingers, just so that you see how it works. Okay, and uh, I don't know if you're able to see this, um, you see that there's a lot of air over here on the side. So how can you apply now more water? And there are two ways. 
Of course you can use again a dropper pipette and you can apply water like this and you see that the capillary action and surface tension will pull the water in and a second possibility that you can do and I like to do this actually I take tweezers I close the tweezers like this and I dip it into the water and now I've got a little water drop caught uh, caught in here and then essentially by touching it here on the side I'm able to and opening the tweezers again I'm able to add more water okay to the cover slip and of course if you overdo this what's going to happen uh, you've got the cover glass floating on the slide again in this case you should again remove some of the liquid okay so that's essentially the simple and easy version of making a wet mount. Okay, so um, next we're going to have a look um, at making a wet mount using a, a dry sample. Now let's assume that the sample is not already uh, suspended, is not already present um, in, in water, like uh, for example we had before like in, in uh, a pond water sample. Let's say that I would like to have a look at some house dust over here. This house dust of course is in a dry condition and uh, here as well I, uh, the house dust has to be uh, uh, placed into water first otherwise you do not get the optimum resolution. So I'm going to do it like this. I take some water over here. I place the house dust into the water and now I do have the problem I do have the problem that the house dust itself is not completely covered in water and if I drop now the, the slide, uh, the cover slip, uh, the cover glass on top of it, I have a lot of air bubbles. So um, what I need to do now is the following. I need to apply um, also on the top of the house dust some water. And you notice that this is kind of difficult because the fibers, many of these are, are textile fibers, they do not like, uh, they're hydrophobic and therefore do not like to uh, be in contact with the water so it takes a little more time for the whole thing to actually accept the water and then you still have the problems of having uh, too, uh, too many air bubbles in here so um, but still the procedure is pretty much the same okay um, you lower a cover glass on top of it and now we have the condition that I mentioned already before there is too much uh, liquid and the whole cover glass is floating around and giving you an unstable picture therefore I have to remove some of this liquid again okay with a tissue paper notice that I removed a little bit too much here and over here I have now a the corner over here I don't know if you're able to see this but the corner over here now is lacking um, some water so I have to add some more water again like this okay and slowly it starts to fill up again yeah here we go okay so um, now if the sample itself does not really accept the water then instead of the water you can also use Im immersion oil so that's something that you simply have to try out you just simply uh, put a drop of immersion oil on the slide you put the dust sample into the immersion oil maybe another small drop of immersion oil on top of it and then the cover glass D it depends a little bit on the, on the sample if it's a very hydrophilic sample water is best if it contains many textile fibers which are hydrophobic plastics and so on then uh, essentially probably immersion oil is going to do a better job here okay so that's essentially uh, the second possibility now occasionally it can happen that uh, you want to look at some water samples and you would like to observe the organisms in the water but that the organisms are so large that they essentially become squeezed between the cover glass and the glass slide and therefore they're, they're not able to move and uh, they maybe they're pressed flat and uh, they're somehow inhibited in their free movement. In this case, of course, uh, you still would like to have the cover glass um, on top of uh, the sample, in a, but in a very stable way. So how can you now keep the cover glass stable, but still ensure that there is a lot of water between the cover glass and the glass slide? In this case, what you do is the following. You um, first apply a little bit of water onto um, place this over here and you use this water to essentially fix and attach the cover glass 
on the glass slide. And these two cover glasses now serve as distance holders. Oh, I'm now dropping the slides. And now what I do is the following. I place a third slide across it and then I'm able to take some of the sample material and apply the sample material in here. Okay. I again remove the excess using filter paper. Okay. Now what, what, what do you see? Uh, you see that the cover glass is now immobilized, it does not move back and forth, therefore you have a stable uh, picture and uh, you have also a uniform distance between the cover glass and the glass slide.